All right, once again, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ram and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today, uh, we are going to take a look on how uh, you can simplify change management with the uh, Service Desk Plus Cloud version. All right, so let's get started. So, as uh, enterprise infrastructures uh, increase in complexity, the processes and uh, IT service management tools needed to manage them also get complex. Uh, this is particularly true for IT change management, where navigating changes becomes increasingly difficult due to disparate processes, outdated ITSM tools, and limited visibility on the outcome. Uh, with all these uh, hardships, many IT teams have decided uh, to bypass uh, IT change management process altogether. However, a poorly implemented change uh, to always puts a business continuity at the risk. So what is the solution? The solution is to simplify the change management process uh, using flexible ITSM tools that allows the IT service desk teams to design change processes of all sizes and complexity with ease and clarity. So with the service desk plus cloud version, we give you that solution. We are now introducing the Visual Change Workflow Builder. Um, with this enhancement, which you might have already seen, uh, you will be able to create dynamic workflows for change management. And we have also introduced templates for the changes and also introduced roles for changes, which acts for each and every change in the application, all right? So with this latest update, ITSM teams will now be able to build visual workflow that provides them clarity all the way from submitting a change to implementing them. So before I get uh, started and take you into the product to show you all, all the new features and how you can configure them, or use them effectively, I'm going to show you a bird's eye view on what all we will be covering and what all the enhancements that has come in. We will start with the change workflows. With the help of uh, change workflows, IT teams will now be able to customize their own change workflows using a simple drag and, drag and drop feature according to their business demands. Um, with this dynamic workflows, uh, you can also configure actions uh, such as uh, moving one uh, change from one stage to another or uh, defining a condition uh, for a change or switch. Uh, like let's say if you want to change the change type um, based on certain condition or an action or you can also send out notifications, approvals and even update values for a change field in the application so you will be able to uh, so with this uh, you actually have more control over your uh, change processes um, so like uh, you know uh, across all your uh, across the life cycle of all your changes uh, in the application and next up uh, is the uh, stage and status with the help of uh, the stages you can have a better understanding of your uh, change management process. So we have six default stages and which also comes up with its own statuses. So with uh, with this, IT teams will now be able to generate multi-stage multi change workflows in the application. And uh, you can also now define templates just like how you have been creating templates for the incident or the service request module you will now be able to uh, um, create change templates, associate workflows for each and every change template uh, in the application. And you can, with that, you have now, uh, you can now visually track the progress of each change uh, with uh, across their entire life cycle, right? And last on is the, the last one is the roles. Um, with the help of roles, you will be able to define permissions for each and every change request individually, where you have, uh, you, you can provide the uh, roles with just a view permission, view edit and approval permissions to various stakeholders and each and every stage or each and every life cycle 
of a change in the uh, uh, application. All right. So that's the uh, that's a bird's eye view. So let's get into the actual product itself, and we can uh, take a look at it. Let's start off with by customizing the change management. You can be a part of your uh, change advisory board uh, in the application, and you can uh, also define risk for a change where you can specify uh, what is the criticality uh, of a change during the implementation. You can define reason why a change is created, like uh, if it's an upgrade, if it's a software upgrade, or like uh, or uh, or uh, security compliance change. You know, you can define a multiple change reasons, and I'll show you where it comes to effect. Likewise, you can define closure codes, um, which represent uh, why, what, what, after what uh, action, or what, uh, yeah, after what action a change is closed, whether it was after approval or cancellation. And uh, you can now define stage and status. As I said, you have six default stages: as submission, planning, cab evaluation, implementation, review, and close. And under that, you can create your own statuses as well uh, in the application. And you can also define role where you will be able to define multiple ro uh, where you, you can have your own roles. Uh, by default, ones are like the change manager, change owner, and the requester. You can create a new role and you can specify who are all the users that will play a part of this role and what actions uh, do they have. Um, in each and every stage of a change. So up, if you give them approve action, that means they will have the ability to move that particular stage, I mean change uh, to the next stage uh, as per the workflow in the application. So he, these roles uh, do, is not for the entire change, but it works individually for each and every change. And you, you can have uh, you know certain roles only for uh, a certain change template. In the application, all right. So we will see that how uh, you can create uh, assigned roles to change templates. And uh, before I go, you uh, go ahead and show you the templates. I'm going to take you into the workflows in the application. So under workflows, um, you can create the new. Click on the new workflow button, and this is your workflow editor where you can have build your own workflows. For example, uh, by default, uh, the workflow starts. With this submission to stage and the requested status. All right. So now what you can do is you can either uh, send it for an approval direct uh, immediately, where you can specify just call it approval one, and you can also say who needs to approve. Should everyone approve it, or if it's based on um, first response action, then here you will specify uh, whether you you're going to choose cab members. So this will list only. Users who are part of the cap, or you can also specify users uh, who actually have access to the change and the roles uh, in the application. So roles work based on the template, right? So for based on the request, uh, the change template, uh, the appropriate user uh, will be sent out with an approval. So for now, let's just add her and then uh, submit. Uh, I mean, save the changes. So once I click on save. Uh, the approval is uh, added over here and what I can do is I can simply drag a line and say uh, if it's requested move it to directly to the approval section if it is approved uh, then take it over to the accepted stage I mean accepted status under the submission stage now you can either move it to a next stage so simply drag the stage and uh, choose what stage you want to have and then uh, specify the statuses. All right, so let's just add status and save. And just call accepted as planning in progress. All right, from here now it goes planning in progress. If it is if it is denied, then you could just say canceled or like that. You know, likewise, uh, you can also send out a notification email where you can specify just uh, uh, identify a, for the notification. Uh, the users or the roles who needs to be notified at that particular stage uh, or a status in the application. Again, you have uh, you can also define a condition. Like for example, let's just add if is the category um, desktop hardware, and uh, let's just call condition and save. 
So this will show you the condition box. So if I come into planning, I just come in like uh, um, it's it's a condition, and uh, I can just say if it isn't yes, then move it on to a next stage or a status uh, as per your preference, right? So um, likewise, you can build your own workflows. You can also update fields um, in the application. Um, so choose which field you want to update, and then the value for it, and you can um, update fields with the workflows itself. So that's how simple it is to define your own workflows uh, in your in this uh, new change enhancement. And let me show you uh, like a complex workflow that you can build, right? So we this we built for uh, a demo purpose. This is a firewall upgrade. So just this is just to show you the amount of complexity that you can put in while you create a change workflow, right? So. Uh, for example, this is submission stage, right? This whole section is submission stage, and under that it goes to condition, updates, approvals, approvals, notification, and likewise, then goes to stage two and stage three, likewise, and it gets completed, right? So this is the amount of complexity that you will be able to put in while you create a change workflow, right? So now, now we have created a workflow. Let's go ahead and see how you can implement it to a template uh, in the uh, application. All right, so you go to uh, templates and forms, change template, and here you can create your own templates, right? So I'm going to call it new temp, new change template, and uh, just call change template one. And you, here you specify the workflow uh, which you want to add. So I'm just going to call it general workflow, and uh, you can specify you can. This is your uh, fields, uh, as just like how you define it. For your request template, so you can define your fields. You can also create additional fields like single multi, single line, multi line, pick list fields. You can also drag and drop section uh, where you can, you know, uh, split fields or group fields. Uh, so you have a change template that is very organized in the application. And once you save a template, um, okay, so let's just call it and save. So once I save. A change template you have the roles tab over here so this is where you define your custom roles that you have created right so change approval or i mean the ones that are by default or you can also create your own roles so you can choose by default who are all the users that are going to be a part of this particular uh, change template and this particular uh, uh, role in the application or you can also create your own roles as well over here all right, so that is how you create a change template. You can define a workflow and you will be able to associate roles for it. So let's go ahead and create a change and let's see what are the changes that are, uh, I mean, like what are the enhancements that has happened in terms of the viewer, right? So this is your new enhanced viewer. As you can see, we have uh, introduced the short ID for a change. So it's much readable and much memorable. And we have also introduced a prefix. So you can. Uh, check what's the prefix or if you want to change the prefix you can do that under the self service portal uh, settings and uh, if we scroll down you can start it uh, change it over here and you can also define a start id for a change request in the application all right and uh, as you can also see this is your workflow if there is a workflow associated whether it is completed or uh, uh, if there is no workflow or if it is in progress, you can find that out if there are any tasks associated. They also get listed over here. And so let's go ahead and create a new change. And uh, I just want to check one thing. Let's just use a workflow for that particular uh, change request so you can have a better understanding on how workflows work. So, okay, so we'll choose general workflow. And uh, I'm going to call uh, myself as the requester and just call me to say it's an urgent change and uh, i can also specify the owner and the manager for this uh, particular change request in the application you can specify what is the reason for creating this particular change you can also define a title so i'm going to call it webinar request webinar change request you can also uh, list uh, choose the services that are getting getting affected this is basically your service catalog Right, and you can also specify the assets that are associated with this particular uh, change request in the application, and you also can define the users who are going to play a part of this 
change role in the application so as i was saying end users and technicians can also be a part of a role right so once i click on save my change request will get created right over there and uh, this is your new enhanced view you can uh, def you have your uh, six stages the conversations the approvals the work logs the history on the right hand side and the left it gives you what's the id for the change what status what's the workflow you can also associate requests uh, problems and projects with this particular uh, change as well in the application if you want to view what is the workflow that is associated with this change so i click on this workflow button and this shows me the workflow and what stage it is currently at it will get highlighted over there you can also export it as a pdf for your reference and uh, under the submission stage you have details roles approvals and status comment uh, fields and uh, you can also find out what are the roles the approvals that are configured if there are any and you can view the change so now as an owner uh, if i'm satisfied with this particular change and the tasks that are done with it i can say um, i can just move it on to the next stage so i'm going to call it accepted and click on save so as per my workflow this should go on to planning and progress so planning and the uh, status is planning in progress right over here i can define my impact details the rollout plan the backup plan the checklist associations and stuff and once i'm done with it i can move it on to the next stage so i'm going to call it as approved again and say now as per my workflow this will trigger out a change recommendation uh, for this per demo purpose i've sent it to me it's up and if i click on my name uh, the pending approval icon on the top it's right over there so i can click on it view the details of this uh, particular change that is sent for my approval and if i'm satisfied i'm going to call it approved and click on save as per the workflow this skips cab evaluation and it goes directly into the implementation stage so the workflow is once it's approved it goes to change approval and i say i can view it go to approval pending move it on to another approval and then accept it or i can directly for for now i just directly say approve it and then moved it to the next stage right so over here under implementation you can define tasks work logs downtime associations etc and uh, and then let's just move it on to complete it save and this will move on to review where you can specify the details of the review and when is the next review scheduled for and uh, once and, and and then under close stage you will be able to uh, define your closure codes uh, you will be able to define your approvals if there are any uh, uh, closure codes can be defined uh, as a text over here and if everything is satisfied i'm just going to call it completed and save so that completes my change life cycle so that is how the, you can define a workflow and that is how you will be able to uh, move uh, that's how a change request can go through its workflow in the application all right so that is the enhancement that is implemented for the change module um, in service desk plus cloud version with that we come to an end of this uh, webinar so go ahead uh, with the new change enhancement you uh, can boost your it change management adoption and if you have any query you can also send an email uh, to our support email address has highlighted over here and uh, we will be glad to um, assist you further as well so thank you very much so, so we are open to queries now if you got any questions i'll be glad to answer